everybody. Welcome back to Mogul Moments. I am your host and mogul maker, CDJ Camille Jamerson. It is such a pleasure to be back with you guys today. I am um, on season four. This is episode four, I believe, and it's entitled Keep On. And um, as you already know by now, because you guys are my regulars, I'm sure, um, all of my um, titles of the episodes for this particular season are songs. So Keep On is a song by D-Train, and it's one of those songs that um, it gets me motivated even if I don't want to be. And it's a song from back in the 80s, I believe it was. So if you don't know it, you need to go go to YouTube. Not right now, because you need to listen to this right now. But after this, um, you need to go and listen to it, add it um, to your song list. It's one of those kinds of songs. So anyway, but um, the reason that I used to keep on for the title of this particular episode is because we're going to talk about things you can do um, before you just throw the whole business away, right? Um, Some of you are um, at a crossroads with your business or with your business idea. Um, because of the pandemic and other things that you have seen happen to other businesses, you are even second guessing whether you should start a business or not. Or you're on the other side to know, okay, because of the pandemic, I do know that I need to start a business, but because of the instability of the economy right now, the instability of um, incomes right now, I just don't know if I should, or um, if I should just look to do something safer. And um, I'm here for safe. Um, I am a firm believer that people need to position themselves in a way where they can eat every day. Okay. So whatever, whatever you need to do that, if that means you need to take on a nine to five, we've talked about that in previous episodes, you got to do what you got to do so you can eat every day. It is difficult to be creative if you're hungry or if you're worried about if somebody's going to come and get your car or if you're going to flick the switch and the lights are going to come on. I get that. Okay. So if you've got to do that, that's fine, but that's no reason to give up on your business idea. That's no reason to just throw your whole business away and all the the hard work that you've put into it so far. And I don't care if all of that work has been mental. It's still work and it's still um, an investment in an idea, even if you haven't had the opportunity to bring that idea to fruition. So there are a couple of things that I'm going to talk about today to help you perhaps pivot a little bit um, that may help you keep Um, your business or help you keep your business idea and maybe birth it differently or rework it differently or pivot um, it differently, but salvage it um, nonetheless. Okay. Um, So we've got to be innovative here. We've got to be creative um, and we are created by a creator. So therefore that creative energy is a part of who we are. So it's time to tap into that Um, Before you just throw your hands up and give up, let's be innovative, let's be creative, and let's just dig in one more time. And hopefully one of the three of these ideas will be one that you can take away um, from this episode and help salvage your business and get you back to the growth and the money-making opportunity that you know um, your business can entail, okay? So let's just dive right in. Um, I've got some notes that are going to hopefully uh, help keep up with everything. So let's start with, we were talking about innovation. Innovation um, is not, as it says on the screen, it's not just changing the flavor of your business. Okay, and what do I mean by changing the flavor? Changing the flavor of your business would be, um, you need to change your colors from um Teal and yellow to teal and black. Actually, that's something I'm thinking about doing for the Camille Company. Um, that yellow is just too much for me right now. But anyway, so but though, though that's flavor stuff. You know, that's flavor stuff. That's um, that's lightweight stuff. Even things like um, changing the logo of your business, or you might think, oh, I need to add my business to Instagram. That's not innovation. Um, that's um, that's important, 
and those things may help you draw business or help um, set you up in a place where you can gain more business or gain more exposure, which could lead to business, et cetera. But that's not innovation. That's not what I mean today. That's not what we're going to be talking about today, not changing the flavor of your business. Okay. We're going to be talking about something a little bit deeper, which is innovation, which is changing the form of your business. Okay. So when we we talk about form, we're talking about processes, how you do business, where you do business, what business you actually do and how you do it. Um, The angle that you're using with your business. You may have thought that your angle was going to be one thing, but if you got to pivot, we may have to do something a little bit different um, to get your business off and running. And then you may have the opportunity to pivot back or to um, re-engage your initial idea for that business as time goes on. So today I want you to think way on the outside of the box. There is no box. We 2020 should have proved nothing else to you but that there is no box. Okay. So we're not talking again about the flavor of business. We're talking about the form of business. So these things are going to sound a little disruptive. And that's intentional, okay? Because if we're talking about salvaging something, if we're talking about um, injecting some new life into your business or to into your business idea, then we're gonna have we're gonna have to do some radical things, okay? And um, you need to be okay with that. All right, all right. Let's go. Like I said, it's only three things, so hopefully this episode won't be that long. I say that all the time and it never works out that way. But anyway, thing number one, you need to either widen your scope to include more industries or you need to narrow your scope to focus your time and attention. I've had to do both. And let me, that's not, um, those things are not contradictory because they're not often things that you do at the same time, okay? It depends on where your business or your business idea is. So for example, um, I'll start with narrow your scope in order to focus. Um, And I've talked about this before. Closer to the beginning of my business, um, I had event planning as a part of my scope because when you're planning um, public relations and community and strategy, and um, with businesses and entrepreneurs and public figures and private figures, nine times out of 10, an event is going to be a big part of managing, protecting, or elevating their reputation or their business brand, right? So I thought that by including event planning that I um, was doing my clients a service um, by including that as a part of what I offered. Instead, there were people who would hire me just for event services, and I had no control over their brand or how it was, um, or how the event was marketed or how the event um, was communicated. I didn't have control over content. Um, So, It was just basically event planning, which I love to do, but it's extremely time consuming. So my brilliant board of advisors, um, they were like, no, I know you love it. Um, I know you have fun doing it, but is the, the the ends didn't justify the means, okay? It just didn't make sense anymore. For where I was taking CDJ and Associates, Um, it just didn't make sense anymore. So eventually I had to uh, take it off of my website, remove it from my content and bios and um, all of that stuff. And it was painful. It was a painful process because like I said, I love events because um, I mean, they are hard and they are time consuming. But when you get to the end of that sucker and it, it goes off, even if it goes off with hitches that you were able, fires that you were able to put out or issues that you were able to manage that your client doesn't even know anything about, there's a sense of pride in that, right? Um, and I'm, I'm 
sharing all this with you because that was precious to me. I enjoyed doing that, but I was willing to let it go if it meant pruning that would help the business survive. Okay. So because I let that go, I was able to focus my time and attention on really building branding, communications, and strategy, which were the three things that CDJ and Associates um, was really supposed to be about. Events. It doesn't even sound like it goes with that um, anymore, right? Um, So that's an example of that. Now, the other one, um, widen your scope to include. So I've had to do that uh, recently. Like I said, the first half of this I had to do kind of at the beginning of the business, but just recently, um, I did not market to or um, really seek to work with with churches, even though those of you that know me know that I am a church girl. I've grown up in um, church world. Um, my father um, was a pastor um, and ministry has been a part of my life all of my life. So if I don't know anything else on planet Earth, I know church, okay, particularly church in the African-American community. I know how to communicate church. I know how pastors think and operate. And um, so it actually would have been a great fit, but I just didn't think to add um, churches to my target market audience. So they weren't really on my purview. But then COVID happened. And all of a sudden, churches um, needed to get online quickly. And when I say get online, they may have had Facebook pages or Instagram pages, but they did not know how to effectively communicate with their congregation in a way that mirrored the same type of communication that they would have gotten as a part of a congregation in a church building. They didn't necessarily know how to manage announcements and upload videos and put thumbnails in place so people could find Wednesday night Bible study easily. They didn't know how to brand themselves on the online world. And so enter CDJ and Associates. Um, We had to Um, widen our scope to include them, first of all, because I care about that community. And secondly, um, it was a good fit. It's what we already do, but now it's with the industry of church and ministry, under the industry, I should say, of church and ministry. So um, it was um, an easy fit. It was easy for us to bring them on. It gave us a wider scope and it opened up doors and opportunities. We got the opportunity to work with a company called Poster My Wall just because of the work that they saw us do with churches. I have done two, I believe, um, webinars for that company um, helping churches build their communications tools. And I'll make certain that I put the link for those um, in these comments so you can go back and watch those um, if that happens to be your world or if someone in um, your community is a part of the church world. We definitely would love to have an opportunity to help them. And in, in some of the things that we talk about in those, um, those webinars with Poster My Wall could be of a benefit to them. So that's number one. So you may have to think about either widening widening your scope um, to include more industries. You might have been thinking you were only going to work with this group, but now you may have, you might have thought um, just millennials between the ages of blah and blah, okay? But you might have to include Gen X, okay? Sorry. <laughs> um, that's my generation, by the way. Um, you know what I'm saying? Or you might have to include Gen Z. You may have to widen your scope just a little bit um, so you can um, target a white, your, so that your target is bigger and you have the opportunity to reach more people, get more engagement, elevate um, your profile. And then, um, as they say, the, the riches are in the niches. So you can niche back down um, when the time comes. But for the purposes of exposure and generating some cash flow, you might want to consider um, widening your scope. 
And that doesn't mean you have to do like I do and go on and, and change everything from this. But you can target people um, without them even knowing that they're being targeted. OK, so just something to, to consider and think about. If you need more insight or help or um, tips or strategies with that. Just just let me know. I'll definitely um, talk through it with you. Number two, teach what you do or how you do it. You might say, OK, Camille, but I haven't really done it, done it yet. But there, there's something that you know or have expertise in that you can teach that can generate income for you. And that may not have been the initial thought concerning your business. You are thinking, no, I want to have a catering company. OK, that's cool. You may still have a catering company or your catering company may not be doing as well right now because there aren't very many public events. OK, but that doesn't mean you can't teach cooking classes. Do you know what people would pay for a cooking class live on Zoom or whatever to learn how to make a decent pound cake? That's real talk. Somebody needs to call somebody and tell them that and tag them right now. Cause that's a great idea. I just came up with that. But but seriously, or if you're um a, a beautician, a hairdresser, and they ain't lost no money during the pandemic, God bless them. But just to go online and teach folks how to flat iron or um the proper way to wash hair, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's it there's so many opportunities to teach um your expertise, set it up as a course or as a webinar. Um, and, and generate income exposure for not just yourself, but for your brand, it will elevate your subject matter level of expertise because people actually see that, you know, what you're doing and that, you know, what you're talking about, and then they can put what you have taught them into practice and then give you feedback and those awesome things called testimonies that you can leverage to get more business, right? Um, so you can do courses, webinars, you can have books, um, classes, videos, such as what I'm doing here. Um, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be about um, your your business. It could be about something personal. For example, for me, I could do a class on um, the things you need to know to care for an aging parent. Okay. Um those of you who, who know me personally know my dad died of pancreatic cancer in um, 2015. And um, my mom um, is is ill as well. She's an aging parent and, and she's suffering um, from several things as well. And the things that I have had to learn, I'm the oldest of four, um, the things that I, and not just myself, but my siblings as well, have had to learn about navigating senior care. Oh my God, I wish it was a class that you could take or a book that you could read or just really know all of the nuances involved. There's so much you need to know in how to do it in a way that's respectful of your parents, but also in a way that puts their um, their best interest at heart. Um, the things that we had to learn, particularly with my dad, when it came to palliative care and hospice care and um, really doing away with the stereotypical images that um, we had concerning hospice care, but embracing um, what it really is and learning if it would work for our family and putting those things in place to be of a support to my mom and to us. So I, you see how quickly and easily I could talk about those things. That could be a course because I know that um, myself and my siblings aren't the only people that are going through something just like that, 
right? So there are things that you already know, just based on what you've been through already, that you could teach, that you could write a book on, that you could create a webinar on, that you could coach on. And that may not have been initially where you wanted your business to go, but that could be the thing that helps elevate your business to the next level. So number two is teach what you know. We got one more. Number three, create a partnership. And this one is a toughie for entrepreneurs. And you know why? Because a lot of us, myself included, suffer from that um, that Lone Ranger syndrome. You know, we think we we in it by ourselves, just me against the world, you know, and it's like, no, you're not. You know, there are 15, 20,000 other people doing exactly what it is that you want to do, if not more, right? But the key is when I say partner, I don't necessarily mean you need to bring on a um, co-chairman or a co-CEO or sell off half your business. That's not what I mean. What I mean when I say partnership is to perhaps look at an agency model for what you do and see where it fits in the grand scheme of things and what other businesses you can um, bring into this kind of circle of trust and all of you guys build together. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Um, Okay, let's go back to my event planning um, example. Let's say I was just an event planner. I was an event planner, okay? And because of what's going on right now, um, events are few and far between where people don't necessarily need a planner. But um, also because of what's going on, um, funerals have just went on the rise, okay? Um, it's, It's stabilizing now, but let's, you know, thank God. But still, we're having a lot more than we normally would. So as an event planner, you could get with a funeral, a couple of funeral homes and offer your services as a part of a package that they may offer to help families navigate planning, um, not just the funeral services, but um, that week, especially if you're in African-American community, you know, it takes us a week to do everything. So that week prior to the funeral to kind of navigate um, food and, and things that people want to drop off and donate, you are navigating who getting in what car, you're helping them navigate. Seriously, because families fall out about stuff like this. And you can be that person um, that kind of manages everything on their behalf. And you're the bad guy, but you can pay for it. Okay, so that's one idea. Another idea when I say um, create partnerships is that agency model. So as an event planner, I could hook up with a photographer, um, somebody who owns a hall, um, a bridal salon, a makeup artist, and what else? And a caterer, okay? All of us together, we could be called the event collective. And we can create a package where a couple getting married, they get all of us for this amount. They get a dress between this amount and this amount, of course. Um, They get um, a hall, a caterer, a photographer, a makeup artist, and an event planner. Okay? We create this package price. Everybody agree to it. And it it only has to be for a short period of time, guys. I'm not saying you got to work like this forever. It could just be for um, six months or or whatever, right? And you can still do business on the side outside of the collective or outside of the agency model that you've created. But this gives all of you exposure because now the photographer um, is talking about you on his page and the caterer is talking about you on his page and you're talking about the bridal salon on your pages and you're exposing people to the makeup artists on your pages and the makeup artist is talking about you as an event planner on their pages and you're getting all of this extra um, lift and exposure that can help give your business the boost that it needs to go to the next level. Okay, so um, that may not have been what you had in mind, 
right? You might not want to work with anybody else because that is challenging. That's not going to always be easy to do. You got to agree on a a price. You got to agree on money. You got to agree on how money is going to be distributed. It's a lot to it. But the ends do justify the means in this particular case because everybody can walk away a winner if you learn how to work together for a short period of time. And instead of everybody struggling, everybody can elevate um, and use um, and leverage, I should say, each other's businesses to their advantage. Okay, so those those are the the three things. It's. You want to widen your scope to include or narrow your scope to focus. You want to teach what it is you know, and that could be in industry or out of industry, and or you want to consider um, developing a partnership or an agency model with those who are in your, in a part of your industry, but don't necessarily do what you do, the other pieces that are needed. Um, to do what you do. So hopefully one of those ideas really kind of stuck with you like, wait a minute, I can do that. And, um, or I wasn't quite thinking about that. Or maybe, you know, one of these ideas kind of gave you another idea and that's fine too. But what I really want you to, to think about is that before you just give it all away or just you know, throw your hands up and forget about it. You want to be on record for trying everything that you could, okay, um, to make it work. Because you'll never forgive yourself if you don't. You know, the the worst thing to live with is regret. Okay, so if nothing in it, it, then if it don't doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, you might need to do a 360 degree, I should say 90 degree pivot and do something totally different. And that's fine too. But for that thing that's burning in your heart right now, that passion that you have, that business that you have, that book that you have, whatever it is that you have going on right now, before you um, give that puppy up, um, try one of these things or, or, or think of a way that you can be innovative and creative and, and pivot your business either slightly to the right or to the left and see if Um, You can come up with something that would salvage your business and help catapult your growth and exposure to the next level. I think your business is worth that. Don't you? I I mean, I do. I think it's worth that. So that is mogul moments for today. Yeah, I did this in less than 30 minutes. Boom. Okay, that is like epic for me. Um, usually this is the part where I tell you about, um, what's coming next week, but I'm not sure what that is because at the time of this taping, I don't have that confirmed yet. So, uh, stay tuned. If I do know by now, I would insert it right about here. So if I do, I'm going to have it on the screen right here. So you can see what's coming next week and whatever it is, I know it's going to be great and wonderful. So make sure that you uh, tune in. Hopefully you're liking season four so far. Um, when you get a chance, could you guys just tell me kind of um, out of the changes that we made and the upgrades that we've made, even with the guests that we've had, kind of tell me what you like um, so far, what you don't like, what I can do better. Um, so I can make some shifts and some changes and, or really enjoy the kudos, um, as we go forward and, and wrap up, uh, season four, um, we're still taping now and I'm trying to get all the taping done, um, before summer hits because, you know, we, we usually take, uh, summer off. So, um, again, if you are a business owner out there and you want the opportunity to sponsor a Mogul Moments episode, please let me know. I would be more than happy to have you. It's really inexpensive and it's a great way for your business to get exposure with my audience. If you're interested in connecting with me offline, make sure you DM me and let me know or send me an email at info at cdjandassociates.com. That's I-N-F-O at C-D-J-A-N-D associates, all spelled out. Uh, dot com. And that's to Rima, my amazing assistant. And her name is spelled R-E-E-M-A. And um, she'll get you on my calendar and we'll chat. Okay. All right, guys. Well, it's been fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope something was said or done that will 
um, inspire you to keep on. Okay. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please make certain that you um, let me know down in the comments and share it with somebody that you know. And please subscribe. I want to make sure that you're getting like the heads up when these things drop off, jump off. So if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that little subscribe button. If you're on Facebook, make sure that you're following me. You might've stumbled on this by accident, but make sure that you are following me. So um, when these episodes jump off, you can just click and join me. Okay. All right. See you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.